five degrees from the poles is lo are situated uh, polar openings that curve gradually into the interior of the Earth. My so estimate. Go ahead, Bronte. My estimate of the polar openings is that they are about 890 miles from crest to crest, and it gradually curves into the inner Earth. Uh, from outside the, in, the inner surface would be about 2,500 miles. And as it gradually curves in, where, where it gets down close to where they're, to the neck of it, it's only about 90 miles uh, in diameter. So with that curvature, though, it's very possible that you could fly into it or even walk into it, and you wouldn't even know because it would be ever so slightly, right? Very, very slightly. The curvature can, can be de de detected. And on our voyage to the Hollow Earth expedition, we're going to take uh, gyroscopes that will be able to detect the curvature into the polar opening and help us locate that 90-mile aperture. As you go into the Hollow Earth, as Admiral, uh, Admiral Byrd described, uh, you start seeing um, vegetation, uh, prehistoric looking animals and then you've got this colony of extraterrestrials what are the possibilities Rodney that also within this hollow earth might be human beings who have somehow decided to live there is that possible I'm certain that the um, people that live in the hollow earth are not extraterrestrials they're uh, most of them are, are uh, from the lost tribes of Israel that uh, migrated into the North Countries over 2,500 years ago and have just progressed uh, faster than we have because they don't have wars and sickness like we have. Well, now, what's your, what, what's your theory or evidence behind this one? In 1829, a couple of Norwegian uh, people, uh, Olaf Jansen and his father Jens, uh, were fishing up north of uh, France Joseph land when they noticed a lead through the ice and they followed this lead northeast of France Joseph land and accidentally found their way through the North Pole opening to the inner earth they uh, reached the inner earth uh, and, and uh, sailed along the coast and went up this big river which they later found out was called by the inhabitants of the inner earth the High River Heidekel, which is one of the rivers that flows out of the Garden of Eden. They were met by a ship of inner earth that was coming down the river and were taken in by them, and they lived among them for two years. And they learned their language, which he described as similar to Sanskrit, and uh, they related to him that their God that was uh, Jehovah. Jehovah is the God of the ancient Israelites. Now, it's interesting that Olaf Jansen and his father were not Christians. Right. They, they right. believed in the Norwegian gods of Odin and Thor, which is their mm -hmm. ancestors. And their ancestors, they, they have a legend that their ancestors... Uh, their cousins of their ancestors uh, migrated into the north country, and uh, Olaf Jansen's father called them the chosen people. And they believed that uh, those people uh, were uh, related to them. All right, so you believe that we're not dealing with extraterrestrials here, as some people have theorized, but, but human earthbound inhabitants who have had such a tremendous technological capabilities, but that they are the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. You know, only 300 years ago uh, was, our, was uh, uh, the time when uh, Galileo uh, lived. When he looked through his telescope and looked at Jupiter and saw moons going around Jupiter and then claimed to the Catholic Church that uh, we weren't the center of the universe, that we probably went, we were probably orbiting the sun. Well, that was only 300 years ago. 
These people inside the hollow earth have been living there for 2,500 years with the scientists, scientific uh, advancement that they have. They're a couple of thousand years in, in advance than us. I believe that they have the, this uh, techno technology, uh, that, that they have these flying saucer technology, and that uh, a lot of the little green men that they see are actually robots. Doctor. All right, so when we see humanoids or something uh, like that reported, you're saying that these are robots sent from those in the hollow earth? Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Greer is a uh, medical doctor that has researched uh, flying saucers and has uh, about 400 or 500 expert witnesses. One of them said that uh, they have dissected these UFO knots that they have been able to down some of the flying saucers and dissect some of these UFO knots. And uh, they dis he describes that um, they have two brains. One is computer chips, and the other one is a human-type brain. And he says it doesn't have any uh, sexual organs, no digesti digestive organs, uh, no vocal cords. They communicate with telepathy. Uh, my conclusion is that the inner earth people have built these androids that fly their flying saucers out to reconnoiter the outer outer earth. The hole itself would be how big, let's say, looking at it from the top of the planet, looking down, how big would that hole be in terms of miles across? Okay, uh, where it starts to dip into the, into the polar opening is about 445 miles, I estimate, from the center of the opening. It gradually curves into the earth so that at the neck of the opening, it's only about 90 miles. Now, there was a, a, a fellow that uh, sent an email uh, uh, asking about the uh, airline flights over the pole and why had they haven't seen these polar openings. Well, mm -hmm. really, the polar opening is quite small. Uh, they could easily miss it in all their flights up there. All right, stay with us, Rodney. We're going to take this quick break. Welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie, Rodney Clough, our guest. Rodney, let's uh, get right back into this hollow earth theory. Uh, the uh, We were talking about the, the distance. So you say it's about 445 miles across before it really starts to go in, the curvature goes in. Uh, uh, now, when you talk about hollow earth, uh, again, are we talking about something that goes all the way down from the North Pole to the South Pole, or do you think it, it hollows, it stops, and then maybe there's another hole at the South Pole that does the same thing? Or does it go all the way through the planet? It goes all the way through the planet, but you need to understand that the Earth is mostly hollow. Like an atom is hollow, uh, it has an electron shell and a nucleus uh, suspended in that hollow. The Earth also has a shell. It's only about 800 miles from the outside to the inside, and there's 6,400 miles inside the Earth that is hollow. There's uh, space. All right, if you were to be in the middle there, aside from the fact that you say there's a sun there, looking up, what do you think you'd see? What would you see? Rocks? What would it look like? If you were standing on the inner surface, yeah, and just looking, I guess, toward the sides of the inside of the planet, what would you be seeing? Well, out on the outer surface, our uh, Earth curves away uh, so that you can't see past about 60 miles before the horizon dips below the, the horizon. Inside would be just the opposite, where the, the horizon uh, uh, gradually curves up. And uh, Olaf Jansen described the sky as a purplishly color because of the uh, the other side of the hollow was also covered with uh, vegetation. And uh, of course, uh, directly above your head is the the inner sun. Uh, would there be clouds up there? In there? Oh, the yeah, the atmosphere uh, inside uh, is. The, the, is just like on the outside of the sur surface of the Earth. Uh, most of the atmosphere 
uh, is within the first 45 miles, but extends up uh, to about 600 miles uh, uh, as it rarefies towards.